All right, in this section, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about latency. And uh, as we all know, in digital consoles, uh, when we start using third-party plugins or outboard gear, there is going to be a latency that we need to manage and make sure that we understand uh, so that we keep our sources aligned, especially so when we're mixing music, right, where we might have multiple microphones on one thing or, you know, we want to really make sure all of the inputs are exiting the console at the same time. You know, that's a big piece of that in terms of mixing music. So we want to be able to manage latency. And in uh, this situation where we're using third-party plugins, especially with Wave Sound Grid, remember, we're going to go out of the console to a processing computer and come back. Uh, and then we're also going to go out to from our mix engine to our HDX card and back. So there's a couple of path links that we've got to contend with here and understand what's happening. So let's go to the plugins window. I'll kind of give you a tour of how we find these times and then give you some tips and maybe show you some ways to manage it here. So here's our uh, here's our rack again. Remember, we, we still have our same input set up here. We have our mono input, our stereo input, our send and effects return, and a, and a mains left, right, that also have plugins on it, right? That's our four plugin slots here. So if we go to uh, the mono channel, let's just take a look at the mono channel. We see our plugins here. Remember, the stereo channel is exactly the same layout right now. But if we look at the mono channel and we right click on one of the uh, drop down menus, we can see the latency for that plugin. Uh, you can see that for the C4, it is 1.3 milliseconds. Uh, we also get the total rack latency. And by rack latency here, it's talking about this individual rack, the accounting for these eight slots within that one venue plugin slot, right? And that is 3.1 milliseconds or 298 samples. But in venue, that's not the entire story. If we want to go uh, to the inputs page now, and we look at, um, we want to look at that path link back and forth to the HDX card as well, because we have to account for that here. So if we right click near inserts, we can see that that's 458 samples, 458 samples in total. That includes the wave sound grid, grid rack there. All right, so we, we need, now that we know that time, uh, you know, we just use that piece of information as we might need to use it. Uh, for instance, maybe if we're on a drum kit or something and we have, uh, let's just take an example where we might put a lot of process and we might do a lot of processing on the snare top mic, but not necessarily on the snare bottom or the overheads. Well, if we if we increase the, the through, throughput of that snare top microphone, we really want to delay the other microphones used on the kit back to that snare top again and keep them all in alignment. Again, we kind of want them all to exit the console at the same time, just as they would in analog, right? So uh, that time is important and, and being able to manage it uh, properly is important. So let's measure it. Uh, for you guys that come to my mixing clinics and uh, you know have, have worked with me out in the field, you know I'm a big proponent of using FFT for this, uh, have been for many years. It is your secret weapon on a digital console in terms of measuring and understanding what's going on latency wise on your desk. Today we're going to use smart to do that. So I've just set it up. Uh, I've just put smart right across the left right bus. Uh, any signals we want to measure, we're just going to pan to the left side. The right side is going to be the measurement or I mean the reference. So I've got a noise channel here that is panned to the right. That's the reference. And we'll just measure these other channels to see what their throughput is. And then if we want to make some adjustment, we can. All right, so uh, if you pull up smart here, I'll pull up the smart window and I'm going to turn on the mono input. And as you can see, we need to do a delay locator on the computer to get the time. So we're going to do that. And there you go, 4.7 milliseconds, 4.77 milliseconds all the way through the left right bus there. And remember, there are additional plugins on the left right bus there as well. So I'm going to insert that time and you see our flat phase response, right? So remember our stereo channel, I'm going to mute the mono channel now. Our stereo channel has the exact same plugins on it. So I would expect it to be the same throughput time. So let's turn it on and sure enough, flat response there. Now what happens if we, if we have a different path link there that we want to add together? Maybe we got a couple of different path links going on on a drum kit and we want to realign those things. How do we do that? Well, uh, let's, let's kind, of, uh, kind of mock that up here. Let's go to the stereo channel. And let's just change one of the plugins. Let's just make the, uh, let's change the Puig Tech for a 550A for an, uh, uh, for an API. And now let's measure that. 
And as you can see, it's a different throughput time now, right? Matter of fact, I would bet that it's getting there a little earlier. Yeah, because this is a zero latency plugin. So you can see our, our rack latency has dropped down on that stereo channel. So we're going to want to add some to delay to that to get it back to that 4.77 number, right? So the way we're going to do that is we're actually going to add some delay to this stereo channel. So I'm going to put its delay in place. Uh, and we want to, you know, for doing this, you really want to get your delay increments down to the sample level. So I'm going to go to miscellaneous here. And sure enough, yeah, I'm in samples. Uh, so we're going to go back to that input now. And I'm going to just start adding some delay to that. And you will see it come right into play here. Oops, probably a bit much there, a bit much there. I'm going to have to put in some time on my own here. I'm going to guess about 150 there, maybe 170. There we go. So I had to add 170 samples to that stereo input to get back to a flat, uh, a flat response there in terms of phase, right? So now I know that those two inputs, even though they have different path links on their insert, are actually going to exit the console at exactly the same time, right? So this is an important concept for mixing music where you have a lot of uh, similar things, like I said earlier, you want to make sure all your inputs are actually exiting the console at the same time. And hopefully you can keep that latency relatively low so that it doesn't impact what you're doing acoustically in the room, right? Okay, well, that is a latency. That is how we manage it in venue land and in conjunction with Wave Sound Grid. Uh, the next little place we're going to stop is importing legacy show files. We're going to take some, I'm going to pull up a show file maybe from 2012, 2010, somewhere around there. And we'll load that on the console that already has Waves plugins in it. And let's see how that loads, okay? All right, we'll be back with that in just a second.